Now let us have a look at different different methods which we have available uh, in the exception class uh, with the help of which we can do different different stuff. So let's have a look at, at them one by one and we are just going to have a look at uh, some of the common most common methods that are used by the developers not all of them of course. So yeah, over here we have just written a program uh, in the try block which might throw a null pointer exception or a DML exception or something like that. And uh, over here we have got a generic exception which is catching the exception uh, irrespective of which exception it is. So in this case, we have got different different methods with the help of which we'll be able to identify different different uh, stuff. So first method is get cause method. So this get cause method uh, returns the cause of the exception, right? What was the reason uh, because of which this exception occurred? So you can just call it out like this, e dot get cause, and e is definitely the yeah the variable in which the exception got caught, and uh, you can just call it like this, e dot get cause, and uh, you can either debug it or uh, you can just store it in, into a particular string or whatever you want to do with it, you can. So, but the basic thing that this get cause does is, uh, as it says, that it returns the cause because of which this exception is thrown or this exception occurred. Next, e dot get line number. If you want to know that in which line exactly the exception was thrown, like let's say there are multiple statements that you've written down inside the try block and uh, uh, like there are 10 statements in which you're doing a DML operation and in the catch block, uh, you're catching a DML exception and there is a DML exception which got thrown or which was, yeah, which was thrown. So now how will you identify that which statement out of those 10 DML statements thrown uh, that exception. So you can use this e dot get line number method with the help of which uh, you'll be able to identify that uh, from on, like on which line the exception was thrown. So that's what is what this is. Next, this, uh, this e dot get message method. This returns the error message that displays for the user. So this is the again the most commonly used method uh, with the help of which we identify that uh, what what is this exception for and uh, why it occurred. So yeah, next e dot get stack trace string. So this is a more, uh, let me tell you what this stack trace string says. This will uh, give you a complete execution stack trace, which means that where the program got initiated, which classes it called and which method it, it, it called and then on which line it called another method from another class and from that another method, another class, there was another class, this is another method which got executed and this is exactly where it uh, like it, like there was an exception that got generated. So if you want a detailed info of the complete flow of the execution uh, of the program which uh, throwed an exception, you can get it with the help of the stack trace string. And the next method, the last method that we have got over here is uh, e dot get type name. So this basically returns the type of exception, uh, type of exceptions name, uh, and like when do you need it? when you're using a generic exception to catch it and uh, based on the type, based on let's say some of the types, you want to uh, differentiate that th do this if this is the type of exception that occurred or do that if this is the type of exception that occurred. But of course you can do that with the help of different, different catch blocks. Why do you need this? But still I think this is there is a method and hence I explained. But yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, this is a method with the help of which you'll be able to identify that which exception actually occurred or which type of exception actually occurred in the program. So yeah, that's it.